Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. We are living in a time of unprecedented stress and conflicts, a time of high level of anxiety, a time of war, a time of turbulence, a time of fear. Right now, most of our attention is drawn towards what is happening in Ukraine, towards the war and between Ukraine and Russia. But there is another human tragedy that is happening right before our eyes, closer to the coast of the United States of America. It is only a matter of time before this tragedy reaches its maximum. We are talking about the collective death of an entire nation, Haiti. We have the moral and civic responsibility to inform you about it. We have come to address directly everyone, regardless of nationality, race, color of skin, religion, or sexual orientation. Everyone who cares, everyone who loves Haiti, its people, and its culture. Because Haiti needs our help in this critical moment of history. The country is facing powerful forces of evil. And the objective is to uproot and destroy the Haitian people. Human rights organizations report hundreds of deaths every day. Haitians are dying from gang wars every day. Heads are being decapitated, bodies are being burned, families are being forced to leave their homes, to seek refuge with absolutely no help or guidance from the government. People are dying from hunger and from diseases, from stress, anxiety, things that could easily be mitigated. Haiti is now witnessing its biggest migration in modern time. The Haitian youth, powerless and hopeless, are leaving the country in masses. These are the same people whose creativity, productivity and vitality Haiti needs for its development. It is a country, social capital. And we have come here to tell you that it is all happening by design. It is all part of a plan to cripple the state, to uproot the Haitian people, and to reappropriate the space at the expense and blood of its people. This policy is being implemented through a system of terror that keeps the country on its edge politically, socially, and economically, that scares potential investors away and that keeps the Haitian diaspora at bay. The brutal assassination of President Jovenel Moïse is only a tip of the iceberg. This horrible crime left the country without a head of state. It destabilized it even more, leaving it in worse shape than it was before. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the work of an unholy alliance between some very powerful minorities, wealthy families, and multinational corporations with special interests on both sides of the island. It is the work of an unholy alliance between wealthy Dominicans producers and the wealthy Haitians who are importing the goods. Thanks to this strategic alliance, Dominicans are now producing 60% of everything the Haitians consume. And this ratio is bound to increase. The Dominicans control the economy and soon they will control the politics. The few industries Haiti had, its agriculture systems, have gradually been destroyed while people are going hungry and suffering from high inflation. The Haitian economy is being sabotaged. All meaningful investments are being directed to the eastern part of the island for profit maximization, optimization, and the name of market efficiency.
But we know what these terms mean. More money, more natural resources, more power for the top wealthy 1%. And the price to pay, mass hunger, mass poverty, mass murders, mass migration, which in reality is no different to a situation of war. Speaking of war, we salute the international efforts to bring peace between Russia and Ukraine. We understand that this war has geostrategic reasons behind it. Nevertheless, it remains a horrible event in the history of humanity. The world needs peace and more love, not more wars. We salute this massive international effort which is now underway to help the wounded Ukrainians and to attend to the needy children and refugees, victims of this horrible war. A situation we Haitians are all too familiar with. Haiti is now a war zone, just like Ukraine. What is sad about it? The international media pretends not to see or hear anything or say anything about it. Yet, the situation in Haiti is just as bad, if not worse, than in Ukraine. The Haitian civilians have no guns, they have no standing army, or a government on the side to protect them. The enemy is not in uniform and cannot easily be identified. The people are being attacked on all fronts by a disguised enemy. The Haitian people have zero support from the world's most powerful countries. Haitians are left to fend for themselves. Thus our questions. Will we let the Haitian people die alone? Will we really abandon the people to the whims, fancies, and greediness of the most powerful? Doesn't Haiti deserve peace as well? Aren't Haitians also people? There are some who believe that Haiti has chosen its fate. Those people are wrong. This is the work of this despicable, bloodthirsty, unholy alliance. But we know nothing is new under the sun. We have learned from history that Napoleon sent his powerful army to destroy the emerging Haiti and to re-establish slavery in the year of 1802. For the mere fact that this nation made of former slave existed was a defiance to Napoleon's racist view of the world. It was a blasphemy and personal blow on the face. Haiti stood up for freedom for all, regardless of skin color, as the first black nation on earth. In the years of 2020s, more than 200 years since the slave uprising, there is something to be said about the tenacity, the veracity, and the cruelty of these evil forces. They have not lost the strength. They have not lost one bit of the thirst for wealth and privileges. The same goal is being pursued by more sophisticated means and with even more power than they did before. That is why we would like to make a plea. If you love Haiti, if you care at all, if you love its history and its culture, if you recognize the historical contribution of Haiti to humanity, you must speak for the voiceless. You must speak for the powerless. You must speak for the Haitian people. The United
United States, France, Canada, and Germany are important members of the core group, a group of foreign emissaries that effectively control the politics in port points finance and support its corrupt political system. The support of these foreign emissaries to corrupt Haitian politicians is deadly. The United States, France, Canada, and Germany need to stop supporting corrupt politicians who are doing the bidding of the most powerful, the wealthiest, terrorizing and killing the people. If you care at all about Haiti, say something. Tell your representatives and members of the executive of your country that Haiti wants to breathe. Haiti needs to breathe. Right now, it cannot. Right now, it does not have that privilege. Haitians have been fighting for the freedom for so long. They too dream of true freedom. They want to get up one day and sing a beautiful song of freedom. A song that could be inspired by the words of Martin Luther King. This song could be heard in every city, on every hill, in every valley, from Cape Haitian to Jeremy, from Arcaye to Tigrav, and on the hills of Jatmel. Free at last, free at last, we are free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Help us. Speak with your representatives about Haiti. Haitians too deserve peace. Thank you.